Hey everyone, welcome back to the channel. Today we're going to be going over a possible snowstorm before the Thanksgiving Day period, probably a couple days before. Before we get into it, if you guys could just hit that like and subscribe button, that would really help me out a lot as a small creator, just trying to grow my channel. There's a lot to get into, so without further ado, let's get right into it. Alright, so to start things off, I just want to go over a few model runs that happened today. Today is Tuesday, so just want to go over a couple of the 12Z global model runs before we really get into the the more technical stuff. Now here, this is the GFS model. It's the American model, as you can see in the top left. Uh, it initialized 12Z November 19th, which is today, and it's showing a pretty sizable snowstorm for a good amount of the northeast and southern New England. Very strong low pressure system, uh, Located right around the benchmark, 988 millibars. Consider that rather strong for a mid-latitude cyclone, especially for the, the month of November. Usually we get these bigger storms come late winter, early spring. As you can see, there's a pretty big snow shield here, nothing too crazy. Uh, light snow being overspread through central New York around Albany, um, southern New Hampshire and Vermont, with some heavier snow in Massachusetts and uh, closer to Boston, northeastern Connecticut. So overall, a decent sized storm. There's nothing too crazy going on here. We do have uh, some icing potential, as the GFS is showing, some heavier snow potential in the those darker blues. Uh, coast stays mainly rain. I definitely can agree with this solution. Just wanted to quickly go over uh, what happened earlier today in the model runs. Now this is the 12Z uh, European model that came out earlier today. And as you can see, overall same general idea the GFS. We have a snow shield a little more packed in this time. We have a, a low pressure right around the benchmark, 984 millibars. Rather strong, so there's going to be some wind associated with this storm if, if it turns out this way. Uh, with some heavier snow uh, in between the coast and the interior uh, running through northwestern Connecticut through central Massachusetts. Overall, same general idea between the two best models uh, that we have available, in my opinion. This far out, it's just good to see models in general agreement like this. We're in, we're 126 hours out. Uh, this storm would impact Sunday, November 24th, so uh, a few days before Thanksgiving. At this point, it's just good to see some model consensus, uh, especially in this time frame. So without further ado, let's get into the more technical stuff. So the model showing snowstorms are all well and good, but it needs to have a technical basis behind it. We can't just blindly follow the models. So why do I think that there's going to be a snowstorm, and why am I confident in a snowstorm uh, in and around this period? First reason is um, we're going to take a look at our teleconnections here. This is the AO, the Arctic Oscillation. This is the NAO. Generally, when the AO is, is in these areas negative, uh, you get colder in the east. You have troughs in the east. And generally, when the NAO is negative in this area, same general idea. However, when we see a spike from negative to positive very quickly in a very short time frame, just like we have uh, with these models, that is a heads up that we could have a storm brewing and barreling up the east coast. This happens a lot. This is one of the telltale signs. We have a negative AO. Uh, quickly going to positive in a few days. Each one of these red lines is a different model. We see there's very good agreement. AO is going to be negative and quickly go to positive. After that, uh, it's a little shaky what happens, but we're really focusing in on this specific time period here, right in between here, or more like this time period in between here, right when the AO is rising. Now, same thing with the NAO. We have a, ne a slightly negative NAO, and in between this period and this period, we see that the models are in total agreement that we are going to have a sharp rise in the NAO uh, region. The NAO region is blocking uh, around Greenland. It stands for North Atlantic Oscillation. So I don't want to get too technical into things, but that's just why I believe that there will be a chance for a storm. Now the next thing I want to take a look at is the ensembles. These are the ensembles for the European model. Ensembles are basically a bunch of different models put together, averaged together. So what we're taking a look at here is each individual low pressure system on each individual ensemble model. For the European, there's 51 ensembles, I believe. Um, so we're looking at where the center of low pressure is in between all of these 51 uh, different models. 
It's basically the children to the, the large operational global European model. Each one of these L's signals the center of a low pressure. So you could see we, ha we have a very good agreement that there is going to be a low pressure somewhere within this area. Where we see the green is where the mean is, where the average low pressure system is for every ensemble model. Overall, in this time frame, it is very good to see a lot of agreement right in and around just slightly northwest of the benchmark. The benchmark is this line right here between 40 north and 70 west. This, the, where they cross is what we call the benchmark. When low pressures go over this benchmark, that's usually when New York, uh, Philly, D.C., Boston get their biggest storms and you have the heaviest corridor of snow right in this area. However, this storm is looks to go slightly northwest of the benchmark. Now, with this being said, this means that the heaviest axis of snow will also move northwest. So, as of right now, I think these areas are a good shot to see at least some snow. So, here we're looking at the overall temperature for the European Ensemble model for the same time, um, hour 120, 12Z on Sunday. So this is Sunday morning. And you could see here all of the areas in white and uh, that little green tint are below freezing. Now, these are the areas where it could will likely snow at. Uh, maybe a little northwest of these areas, but but generally these areas is where are where the ensembles are thinking that snow is going to occur during this time. So currently, with all the ensemble and model data we have, I think this is the area that is currently in the biggest threat. This is the European ensemble yet again. This is the 48-hour snowfall forecast. Obviously, this is not a lot of snow. You know, you're talking an inch, uh, an inch and a half. However, this is just the mean average. This is just the average of all of the models put together. So obviously, if there were a storm, totals would li likely be much higher than this, but we're not looking at specific totals right now. Don't focus on the specific totals. We want to look at where the heaviest axis of snow is going to be. That's what ensembles are good for at this range at, at five to six days out, is we want to see generally uh, around where is going to get hit, where is going to be the average uh, axis of heaviest snow, and the ensembles can give us a good idea of that. So we could see here the ensembles really like this area in here. These areas that I highlighted before uh, for some snowfall. Obviously, the darker the colors, the heavier the snow. It's not worth it to get into specific amounts right now, but just know that these are the areas that are at risk uh, mostly for this storm. As you can see, down to the coast, we do have some ensemble members giving uh, some snow for Boston half an inch, a tenth of an inch. Um, but overall, I think the coast is going to be out of this one. Whenever you're in doubt, you have to follow the climate, climatology, and climatology in early November, mid-November, uh, says that the interior is going to be most at risk uh, overall. Obviously, it can still snow in these areas, and they're not out of the risk. In my opinion, they are just at a much lower risk compared to areas a little further inland, just because they're closer to a cold air source, further away from the ocean, and overall, they're just in a better spot to get some early season snow here. So really quick, I wanted to go over the 500 millibar pattern. This is now for the the um, American ensemble, so the GEFS 500 millibars. This is just the average pressure at 500 millibars in the atmosphere, the anomalies. Um, so as you could see, just a really quick one to go over this. We have a trough in the east. We have a strong Pacific jet. Um, our Pacific Ocean doesn't look great. We have a, a trough over Alaska, a stronger Pacific jet, but what I really want to focus on, the Atlantic looks nearly perfect uh, to get a snowstorm. Now, generally, you want your Pacific Ocean to be more favorable than your Atlantic, but you could still snow uh, pretty good with a favorable Atlantic, and we're going to see how. So this is the NAO that I was talking about before, the blocking in the Greenland region, and look at these positive height anomalies here negative NAO right here. Look at these positive height anomalies where we have a strong blocking uh, high pressure in place that's going to keep this storm from traveling too far north. Without this, our storm would likely cut uh, directly inland. However, uh, that doesn't look likely here. It looks like it's going to be a little further south and uh, cut just south of a lot of the mainland and give inland snow. Another thing I really like about this is we have a 50-50 low pressure. 
Uh, this low pressure won't do much besides create traffic in the Atlantic. It's like a traffic jam. We have one low pressure already uh, here, so the next one that's trying to come through is going to have to slow down. It can't just keep moving forward because it's going to run into this one and it won't be able to go anywhere. So it is forced to slow down in and around these areas because it cannot continue northeast until this initial low pressure moves out of the way. So the Atlantic looks really good. Pacific does not look as favorable. We have a stronger jet. We have a trough over Alaska when we would really want a ridge. Uh, but overall, not a horrible setup. Definitely something that we could work with and get some snow with. So unfortunately, that's all the time that I have to talk about this today. I'll be back in a couple days with an update video uh, about this storm system. Overall, keep on the lookout for changes in models. If you guys have any questions or comments, leave them down below or follow my Twitter where I do a lot more model analysis. I update it much more frequently uh, with newer information, newer models at Mike B. Weather. That's where I do a lot of my model analysis. Now, if you guys haven't seen it yet, go check out the winter forecast. Uh, and other than that, see you guys later. Have a good one.